It's more tears for occupants of the Abulia Do as three more bodies were evacuated following the explosion that happened on Sunday. Plus TV Africa correspondent Mary Chinda, who monitored the situation, now reports. A Black Monday in Lagos, Nigeria. Tears, grief and confusion reaching all over occupants of Abuladu as some continue to count their dead, others their financial losses from Sunday's explosion. This Catholic school, the Bethlehem Girls School, is one of the schools that is counting its loss um, following yesterday's explosion. This right here and this is what is remaining from this building which was inhabited by a reverend father who reportedly held a mass here yesterday morning. I'm also told that the principal of this school had also lost her life. These eyewitnesses recount the traumatic experience. I was in the bathroom when the uh, thing started. Like, I was going to take my bath. I want to have my bath. Like, it's just, that's what you just hear is boom everywhere. This is a very terrible incident that occurred yesterday, Sunday, being 15th day of March 2020. On Sunday morning, as around about 15 minutes past 9 a.m. in the morning. Then we had a very loud explosion. I was in the church when we had this explosion. Everybody was running helter skelter to pick their keys and run for their, their life. We found her last evening. Our men, the volunteers of Red Cross, found her with the mother and the brother inside the rubble towards that side. The mother was injured in the head and the brother too was injured, but nothing happened to her. Though there is yet to be an official statement as to what the cause of the explosion could be, with some saying it was a gas explosion, government officials and residents seem divided in their opinions. It's a pipeline explosion. That's what we can say for now. A cluster of Igbos say this may be far from the truth. And my bum. I'm from church, I'm up at the church around 8 o'clock. Now I'm talking, never call it on. I'm not going to work. I'm 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 going to work. It's not just a pipeline. I think the security agents should look into this properly and they should work on it. And I want to say people are still trapped in here. The pipeline is very far distant from the school and the school is exactly where the bomb exploded where the children here is trapped. We have over 2,000 or thereabouts students here, and the Reverend Sister, that is the principal of this school, is dead. While search and rescue operations are still ongoing, three new bodies were found today, increasing the death toll to at least 19. The exact spot where the fire incident had started off yesterday. This is what is left of the fire incident that started off right here at Abulado Festac yesterday. No one has been able to quantify the millions of naira that is lost in this fire explosion. Right here are a heavy presence of men of Nostra Emergency Unit trying to ensure that calm returns to this area slowly. From Lagos, Nigeria, Mary Chief reporting for Plus TV Africa. And joining us live in the studio is Edward Israel Ayede and Plus TV Africa news correspondent Mary Chinder to bring us up to date with the recent explosion at Bu Abule Addo in Lagos State. Good morning, Mary, and thank you for joining us. And also good morning to you also, Israel. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for now, me. as at this morning, the death toll on the Abule Addo explosion had risen to 20, or 20 families been affected. Now, what would you think, or what would you say could have been done to have prevented this whole tragedy? Let, let, me, let me start with you, Israel. Uh, personally, I feel like the major culprit here, uh, when it comes to issues where pipeline explosions and the like, uh, it's Nigeria's uh, town planning authorities, because uh, they know that these places have pipelines, and the, uh, the points where they start approving licenses or permits for people to build houses that they are already putting people at risk. So I feel like these are the major culprits and until something is actually done to make sure that those people who give uh, building permits to those who uh, to those who build houses on close to pipelines yeah. or close to gas installations are 
prosecuted and all that, I think we will continue to have this kind of problems, honestly. Oh, I agree. Now, Mary, you, you've been on, on, on this other scene and you've, 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 you've interviewed a few people who were victims. I mean, what, what would you say, I mean, what, what stood out for you in, in this whole situation? I mean, reporting this, this sad incident. It's the, it's how much damage has been done. How much seemingly um, ir irreparable damage has been done to the families. Um, not just the buildings, you, you know that we had over 50 buildings that were affected in this explosion. It was doing this report and then perceiving the acrid smell of human flesh, which tells us that the government has not done well enough even with the evacuation and um, seeming emergency response. And then it, it, it begs the question, how do we as a country um, attend to emergency response? As I said, this time last year, we had the Itafaji issue mm -hmm. and we realized that even though, I mean, this is Lagos State, um, the commercial hub of Nigeria, we didn't have have a, a good enough emergency response like we would have in other countries like the US, the UK and other nations or even South Africa close by, you know, as a, as a the event, this, the explosion happened in the morning of Sunday yes. and as at um, Sunday evening, we were lucky enough to find the little girl in the report favor who was, um, you know, who was rescued as at Monday afternoon. There was just one excavator on the scene. All right. All right. And we were still we were still removing human bodies. And we, 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 we knew that there were people who were trapped. I said, when I was in, in that scene, we had, we had three fresh bodies that were just being removed. And we, people were saying, there are a lot of people that are still trapped under the rubble. So it's very worrying the kind of response, emergency response that we as a country have when we have issues right, like Edward, this. Right, Edward, I'm going to throw this to you now. And talk, talking about our emergency responses, disasters are bound to happen. Mm. How prepared are we? How, how quickly are our emergency responses to the scene? Talk about um, La Sema, the firefighters. How quickly are these responses and how prepared are we? I will say, uh, like Mary said, uh, we've over time gotten uh, very complacent in terms of responding to emergency. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, credit must be given to states like Lagos State that have introduced uh, La Sema and equipped them. But over time, you see that people still do not respond to emergency as quickly as they should. Like you said, in uh, developing countries, um, in developed countries rather, you see that people take emergencies, the loss of life or the potential that human lives might be lost, people take it very, very seriously. seriously. But in Nigeria, I think we are a bit like a desical about yeah. issues like that. We At times, we even feel like, oh, it's their fault. I, I, I've seen a lot of comments on social media, people trying to blame the victims and saying, oh, why did they build their houses close to pipelines or gas installations? And uh, why are they complaining? Or oh, uh, governments didn't get there on time, but why did they build their houses close to pipeline in the but like I said earlier on, the major person that is at fault here is the government that gave people the permits, the rights to build houses there. And it is also the responsibility of government. It is uh, the government or a governor or a president who swears to protect lives and property. And emergencies are a very, very good opportunity for them to uh, save lives and properties. And if you do not respond to uh, emergencies on time, you find cases where people are trapped under rubble, they might have been saved, and then because they're not saved in time, uh, they die and all that. Oh, oh, I agree. And talking about that, some of the, I, I feel that the, the whole effort of emergency um, response gets, gets, um, gets a setback due to the amount of crowd that gather sometimes. Inevitably, crowds always gather when there's situations like this. How well do we manage crowds at situations like this, citing the Abulia Adoa fire explosion? Mary. Well, well, well if, you, if you ask me first, I, I, we need to understand that there's got to be awareness. People have to be self-aware that, okay, when there's a disaster, it's not about gathering. Because while I was doing the report, they caught it a thief. Someone who was trying to pick up stuff in the middle of other people's pain. Now, it's, it, 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 we're talking about self-awareness, understanding that first, there's got to be a response to rescue those people. It's not about crowd uh, gathering and all of that. But away from the crowd gathering, I feel that there were a mammoth of 
security personnel there more than they, they should be. So we, we had a, a men of the um, uh, Lagos State Neighborhood Security um, uh, Watch. We had men of the Nigeria Police. I even saw a few um, 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 soldiers there. I mean, and all what not. So there's the, the, there's already a heavy heavy presence of security people who could actually disperse the crowd. But the point is, we need to get the people who who, who would respond to emergency go in there and save the people. And I say it again. As at Monday, there was just one excavator at the scene. What was one excavator supposed to be doing when we had people that were still trapped under the rubble? So we, we, we need government to be more responsive to emergency issues, emergency situations, to be more responsive to disaster. In, I think it was in 2002 that we had the, the issue of the bomb blast you know, uh, um, um, in Lagos, the Kedja bomb blast um, already. Last year we had it at Faji. This year we're having this issue. And people are losing their lives. People are still losing their I wouldn't be surprised right. if we have one or two more dead bodies. All right. Now, Edward, I'm, I'm going to ask you this now. There, there seem to be conflicting reports on the, the actual course of this explosion. Some are claiming bombs. Some are saying there's a pipeline. I mean, just contradicting statement. And... We're still not clear as to, as to what was actually the, the primary cause of this explosion. You, yeah, you want, you want I, to throw light on that? Let me let me let, let, let Edo respond to so, that. So I feel, I feel it's a failure on the part of government again. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, people watching the program do not feel like we are unnecessarily attacking the government. But the fact remains that in crisis or during a disaster, truthfulness is a very very important thing that people need from there. People need to be able to trust that uh, the government or their leaders are telling them the truth about situations. Do you understand? Where you find a situation like this where some people say it was a gas uh, installation, yes. some people say it was a pipeline. I've had reports as well that a, a vehicle ran into a shop where gas was being sold. So you have three narratives, three stories out there, and then people do not know which one to believe. Do you understand? I believe it is very, very important for the government to come out and say, this is what actually happened. Uh, the NNPC uh, tweeted the other day and uh, made it seem like it was a pipeline explosion. Do yes. you understand? And then you're also seeing multiple reports, but the government has not come out deliberately to tell us that this is what caused the, the incident. And why do you think that is? Well, because as at Monday, they were telling us that they were still investigating. I interviewed the, the um, NSCDC boss who told me that it was a, a tanker explosion. Uh, but, but truly, we, we're not sure yet what the, the, what the real cause is, even though the people in the community feel that alleg are alleging that it was a bomb blast or it was a bomb explosion, and they're claiming threats to life and all of that. We're just not sure, and it will be wrong for anyone to you know, jump into conclusions before the government does. Mm. Oh, now, Edo, uh, speaking of a system of compensating victims, $2.4 billion was apparently spent and uh, or allocated for cars in Lagos State. And comparatively, <laughs> we hear about a budget of $250 million as compensation for the victims while still appealing to the public for support. Now, does this strike you as, as equitable? Personally, I think that was a very, very wrong call from okay. uh, the governor of Lagos State. Uh, as a marketing communications uh, professional, I think the first thing that I would have, have advised this team to do is you need to first of all communicate trust. What does this say of the priority of the government? What does this say of the priority it of the government? It tells me, first of all, that you're not getting your priorities right. The first thing you need to do in a situation like that is to ascertain the, the costs of the disaster, ascertain what needs to be done to fix the disaster. People died, they lost houses, they lost cars and all that. Let us know what the cost of that will come to before you just come out and say you are asking people to raise two billion naira. How did you arrive at a figure? Do you understand? How did you arrive at a figure? How are you going to spend that two billion naira if people raise it? Do you understand what I'm saying? So the first thing that they failed to do was to let people trust them that they would even spend whatever monies are raised judiciously. Now, now yes. I'm concerned. We, we, don't, we, we have a data problem in this, in this side of the mm. world. I mean, we don't even have the data of this resident and those who are affected. Exactly. Isn't that already, I mean, stating the obvious that there might be a problem in the process of actually um, getting this so-called um, relief funds? That, 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 that is exactly what I'm saying. Do you understand? If you do not have the data, then how are you able to arrive at a figure do you understand? And then Lagos State has always had issues with budget secrecy and the like. So if you're coming to ask the public right now, and like you mentioned earlier, you're able to 
budget 2.4 billion naira to purchase cars for government officials. But this is a disaster. This is people who have lost lives and property within the state. And are we telling me that 2 billion naira is not available somewhere to be uh, used to give relief to those people? Do you understand? Yes. Like, it, it, it just makes me feel like government is not being serious. Do you understand? We can raise money. I'm not saying that it is wrong to ask the public to raise money. I'm just saying that is it 2 billion naira that we are trying to raise that we are just making it seem like that's the only solution to this problem? We've not ascertained how much people lost. We've not ascertained who even lost anything. Do you understand? Yeah. How do we want to spend the 2 billion naira? Are we going to just give people 50,000 naira each? Are we going to just give everybody 1 million naira each? How do we want to spend the 2 billion naira? So it's a question of trust which the governor of Lagos State and his team did not communicate properly. Do you understand? So yeah. even if they do get this money, there will always be the issue of people feeling like, how did they spend the money? People will come out tomorrow and say, oh, I lost uh, goods uh, in my shop, what, 500,000 naira, I only got 50,000. I would never know. Do you understand? Yes. Because the things have not been done properly. All right, just before I let you go this morning, let's talk about preventive measures, precautionary preventive measures. This is not the first time we're having such tragedy. And Mayor, while you're speaking there, you did mention about the Keja Kantumen bomb that happened not too, not too much a distance far. And what already comes to my mind was, um, there, was, there, was a, there was a gas explosion, a pipeline explosion of Jesse, and many people have seemed to have forgotten that. And <laughs> we seem to be like a country that forgets history and of tragedy. Is there likely, is there any likelihood anything that should be done to prevent this kind of tragedy from happening again, from reoccurring again? I'll say that, like I mentioned at the very beginning, we need to get our town planning regulations. We need to get them in order. There are places where people should not build houses. Uh, recently, you see a lot of real estate companies saying, oh, uh, pitching proximity to Dangote refinery, uh, to sell properties uh, ac across uh, around Lekki and uh, environs. And you ask yourself, should people really be building houses close to a refinery? Do you understand? Apart from the potential that there could be an explosion, there's also health reasons and all that. Do you understand? So I feel like until we fix our uh, town planning regulations where we ensure that people do not build houses, schools, churches, or other places where uh, the public gather around pipelines around gas installations and chemical uh, facilities, we will continue to have issues like this. All right. All right. I want to thank you, Edward Ijwal Ayide, for joining us on News This Morning, and also Plus TV African News correspondent Mary Chinda. Thank you for joining me on the news. Thank you very much.